Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to online worship with Cedar Creek United Methodist Church. We are a congregation that is light, life, and love in our community, that is growing, serving, and loving all in the name of Christ. My name is Russell Bolin, and I serve here as the pastor of Cedar Creek United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad that you are joining us for this time of worship. As you settle in today, we encourage you to hit the like button on this video and consider sharing it, as this is a way of sharing the message of God's love with others. This service is being posted on the second Sunday of Easter. During the Easter season, we continue to wonder at the good news of Christ's resurrection and encounter the risen Christ. As we begin this time of worship, I invite you to light a candle as a reminder of God's presence with us as we worship God together. Now let us join together in praising God through music. There is a book called Believe It or Not by Robert Ripley 
that's also been made into some TV shows. Mr. Ripley enjoyed collecting strange and amazing bits of information, which although they seem unbelievable, were true. Let me read a couple of examples from the, of the amazing things you will find in his book. A man once had a chicken that laid a perfectly square egg. Now, I've seen white eggs, brown eggs, even spotted eggs, but I've never seen a square egg. Have you? I think I'd have to see it to believe it. Or a 15-year-old came from California, and she once, once swung a lot of hula hoops on her body at the same time. How many do you think she swung on her body? 68. Can you believe that? I can't even keep one hula hoop going. I think I would have to see that to believe it. Ripley's book is filled with things that are hard to believe. But do you know what? It's true. It's true whether I believe it or not. In today's Bible lesson, we learn that on the, sun, on the Sunday that Jesus rose from the grave, he appeared to a group of his disciples. One of the disciples, whose name was Thomas, was not with them. When the disciples told Thomas that they had seen Jesus and that he was alive, Thomas said, I won't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. I want to put my finger in the nail prints on his hands and place my hand where his spear was thrust into his side. A week later, Thomas saw Jesus. Jesus invited Thomas to touch his hands where the nails had been. He told Thomas to put his hand in the wound on his side. And then Thomas believed. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. A lot of people today won't believe that Jesus really rose from the grave because they haven't seen him with their own two eyes. But it's true whether they believe it or not. Even if we've never seen Jesus, we can believe. We accept him by faith. We don't have to see it to believe it. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for helping us accept by faith that you have risen from the grave and that you are alive. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your word and Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. When it was evening on the day of the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Happy Easter. The rest of the world has moved on, considering Easter to be something in the past. But the church celebrates the great 50 days of Easter. And so we continue to say, Happy Easter, and greet each other with the greeting of Christ's resurrection as we begin this time of worship together. On Resurrection Day, last week, what we call Easter Day, we marvel at the empty tomb and its meaning. But the rest of the Easter season is also filled with resurrection encounters, with people getting to know this resurrected Savior and, and continuing to struggle with just what it means that, that Jesus has overcome the grave and death. Last Sunday, we read the first part of John's chapter 20. And when we stopped, only Mary had received a resurrection encounter. And as we continue through this season, and as we continue today through the rest of chapter 20 of John, the other disciples also get their own resurrection encounters. But not all at the same time. You see, Thomas missed a gathering And so he missed the encounter with Christ. And because of that absence, he's been given an unfortunate nickname and reputation. At least more recently, he's been given that nickname of the doubter. Thomas's story is often used by myself and others as a kind of funny way of poking at one another that you better not miss church because you might miss something big and then get an unfortunate nickname. Today's reading is a wonderful example of how John's gospel throughout it connects seeing with believing. Although it gets him a nickname, Thomas really only asks for the gift in the encounter that the others were given and granted. All he asks for is to see, to see Jesus. But he also goes beyond that and and pushes further than that, saying that he must also touch the risen Christ as well. But a week later, it seems that Thomas has forgotten that demand. And he, upon seeing Jesus, makes his statement of faith and of belief and saying, My Lord and my God. But he also hears Jesus' voice, which is another important theme in John's gospel, to hear the voice of the shepherd. So he hears Jesus' words, and he hears Jesus' word to encourage belief. And Jesus has a word, I think, for us as well in John's gospel, for us who, no matter how much we ask for it, will never get the gift of seeing, of encountering the risen Lord. No matter how much we say it this week, we won't get it next week like Thomas does. We won't get that gift to help move us from disbelief to belief. So, how can then we come to believe? How have we come to believe? We who have gathered here out of our faith and belief And maybe a more important question to ask, since we are already among those who believe, is how how are we able to give others that encounter that brings them from disbelief to belief? One idea, a quote attributed to St. Teresa of Avila, Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. 
There are a few things that I think this passage has to offer us in terms of our faith and our growth beyond just making us a little bit envy, uh, envious of Thomas and the other disciples who did get to see the resurrected Jesus. I think one of the things that it has to offer us is understanding that skepticism and disbelief, or as we might come to call it, doubt, is not always a bad thing. In this case, Thomas's refusal to believe without receiving the same encounter that his friends did, it's a gift to us. It brings a gift to us. And it makes us have someone to relate to. Because Thomas missed that first encounter. Well, really, the second encounter with the risen, risen Lord. But he missed that encounter on that Easter day. And so did we. And his encounter also is a gift to us because it keeps us from thinking that this appearance of Jesus is a one-time event, perhaps spurred on by sudden grief and shared grief, or maybe some bad food or too much drink that caused all of them to have the same sort of hallucination. Thomas, a week later, with his friends, receives another gift. And through that gift, he comes to faith. Although seeing is believing, we cannot see the risen Lord. And that is the way that I think we can show others the body of Christ. We can show others the body of Christ by being the body of Christ. And perhaps even more, we can show others Jesus by speaking the words of Jesus. By having all of our words be that of Christ's words. By having our words be to the world peace and encouragement to believe. I think one of the gifts that this passage offers to us is just that. Christ's greeting to his disciples and to Thomas and to us of peace and encouragement. I think that's a gift that we can give the world and to help them meet Jesus and have an encounter with the body of Christ. Because we live in an era when it seems that speaking ill of or speaking ill toward an other is not only become common or accepted, but it almost seems to be encouraged but we might best show the world Christ through the way that we speak to and of others. Maybe we should add that to the quote as well. Our own addition for this day and age. That Christ has no voice but yours. Yours are the words with which others can hear his word of peace and come to believe. As we go from this place, we go with the question on our mind. Will we show and tell others of Christ's resurrection and help move them from disbelief to belief? Will we help them see Jesus? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray our time together has been a blessing to you. Please remember to like this recorded worship service on Facebook or YouTube and share this with your friends. This is how we are growing our online community of faith. Cedar Creek United Methodist Church offers a food pantry to the community on the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month from nine to noon. If you or someone you know is in need of groceries, please come. Messy Church is on the third Sunday of each month from 3.30 to 5.30 in the afternoon. Come and see what worship looks like beyond the traditional setting in this fun, family-oriented ministry in which we learn the stories of our faith using hands-on activities and leave the cooking to us as a free light meal will be provided. Cedar Creek UMC offers multiple ways to be fed in knowledge, spirit, and fellowship during the week. Brown Bag Bible Study meets each Tuesday for prayers, service opportunities, a video-driven study, and communion. Our gamers group plays cards or other games on Wednesdays. They enjoy a light lunch that's provided. In the evening on Wednesdays, we offer Wednesday at the Well, including a meal at 545, followed by Bible Bingo. For more information on any of these activities, contact the church office. Come to anyone or all. Thank you to all who uphold Cedar Creek United Methodist Church with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Together, we are partnering with God to be light, life, and love in this community. If you would like to make a financial contribution to Cedar Creek UMC, you may do so online via our website, cedarcreekumc.org. A reminder that there is a fee for online giving for which you may be responsible. Or you may put a check in the mail to P.O. Box 33, Cedar Creek, Texas, 78612. Your tithes and offerings are greatly appreciated. No, we are praying for you, and I hope you are praying for Cedar Creek UMC as well. Receive this blessing as we say goodbye. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Psalm.